Hello weeders, welcome back to the greenhouse. I'm Beth Myers Shanai with the Oregon Department of Agriculture's Noxious Weed Control Program. And I'm here today to show you another couple of specimens from our educational weed garden here in Salem. And today I've got Phragmites, um, also known as common reed, which is an emergent aquatic plant that has been an issue, especially along the Columbia River and some of the lower Multnomah, um, in the Multnomah Channel of the Willamette River. And um, it very similar to reed canary grass in some respects. So I, I have specimens of both, even though reed canary grass is an invasive grass, it's not on our state noxious weed list. Um, it is problematic kind of throughout um, Oregon in especially Western Oregon in moist, meadowy, um, wet areas. Um, but Phragmites has the ability to definitely outcompete even reed canary grass. Um, and there is some similarity to way, the way that their leaf um, forms and stands out away from the stem. So this is a common reed or Phragmites plant. And this is reed canary grass. And you might notice, um, although I do have this one staked up, I, I do have a sprout here that's not staked and it stands up very straight, whereas the reed canary grass in the same size pot is a much thinner, um, a finer stemmed plant and tends to flop over a little bit. Unfortunately, uh, I don't have anything near a representative specimen of what you'd find in the field on either one of these um, because they would both be a lot taller. But even in this case, my uh, Phragmites plant, I'm gonna bring it down so you can kind of see the difference. Um, just from a, a very tiny start that I picked up last year has grown quickly and much taller than this um, reed canary grass start. Um, it's probably ready to be divided in, into a pot too to help it grow better, but um, but the Phragmites is the one particularly that we want folks to keep an eye out for. Uh, it grows very tall, much taller than, as I was saying, than the reed canary grass, and it has bushier, much bushier plumes, uh, flower plumes or seed heads on it. Um, but one of the very key identify, identifying features between the two is a little feature right where uh, one of the leaves attaches to the stem. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get you to see this or not, but I've marked a spot on the stem in between which are the ligules, the little spot where the leaf wraps around. I'm gonna keep zooming this in and see. Hopefully you'll be able to catch a little bit of the hairiness that's sticking out from the plant right between the black marks. I'm trying to put a little profile of it on the side. In reed canary grass, that same spot on the leaf is actually just a little bit of papery sheath. And it's, it's a lot harder. It's, it doesn't stick out prominently on any of the ones of these plants. You might see it stick out. But if you look in the same location, right where the leaf attaches, on the opposite side of where the leaf is sticking out, it'll be papery there instead of hairy. Another um, indicator that you have Phragmites growing is um, these very pointy little starts. When they first come up out, they're very pointy. This one decided to take a shortcut and come out of the bottom of the pot instead. And um, it, you can see kind of how thick it is, how robust it is. It's ready to come out and start growing. Just much thicker, gonna grow much taller, so it needs to be a much sturdier stem. Those are pretty much the main differences I can point out to you here the thickness of the stem. Um, there's a little bit of reddishness going on here also, um, especially lower down in some of these parts of the stem that you really don't see so much in reed canary grass that you could look for. But if you're not sure which one you have, it's those little hairs that are really gonna tell the difference for you right away. I should also note that there are some native Phragmites in Oregon. They don't grow nearly as tall or hardy but they may also have the hairy ligules. So if you're really not, not sure if this might be uh, the invasive kind of Phragmites or not, then you should get a botanist or a specialist to come have a look at it for you before you decide to control it. This is listed on our B list in the state. So we don't have a lot of um, high priority areas that we're working on, but we do have some spots that local agencies are working and we help where we can because there isn't a lot of it. So we are, um, we are gonna kind of track it down 
and offer help when we can. So I hope that helps you tell the difference between reed canary grass and common reed or Phragmites australis, subspecies australis. This is Beth from The Greenhouse and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.